Hey, what's up guys? Um, so I've been getting a lot of questions recently about where is this nth roots formula coming from? Because looking at this thing, it's not the most intuitive and kind of is easy to just like blindly plug in your values and then get the answer. So I, I'm going to try to explain it with an easy example that hopefully when you're applying this formula in the future, you kind of understand where this stuff comes from. And honestly, it'll be super beneficial in the long run, especially when linear algebra gets like a little bit more challenging. Just like knowing where everything comes from, it's just like always a really good way of learning. So we're going to continue with an example. And the example that I want to choose is z to the 3 is equal, is equal to 1. And that could, that could be anything. I just wanted something to be equal to 1. And we're going to try to find the third roots of this. So the first thing that I like to do when I'm doing any kind of complex number problem with like uh, to the power of something or like an angle is involved, I like drawing an Argon diagram. And the Argon diagram is just a, it's kind of like a Cartesian plane where we've got our imaginary axis and our real axis in replace of the x and the y axis. So this is, uh, the, our z to the 3 is what we're going to try to draw on this Argon plane. And um, we know that it's going to go zero units in the imaginary axis and it's going to go one unit in the real axis, right? Because I could write one as equal to one plus zero j. So it's zero units in imaginary and it's going to go to the one on the real axis. So we're going to start at the origin and I'm just going to represent this number, this z to the three, as a vector from the origin to one. And you'll see here that the length of our vector is represented by this symbol right here, the modulus of z to the 3, and that, that has a length of 1, right? OK, cool. And the angle that this makes with the real axis is 3 theta. And theta, we're talking about uh, we're going to be talking about the theta of like one of the roots. That's the theta that we're referring to. So l let me just write this out and it'll make a little bit more sense. So we've got z to the 3 is going to be equal to, and then we know from De Moivre's theorem, let me scroll down a little bit. We know from De Moivre's theorem that it's the modulus, right? The modulus of z to the 3, which is 1 times cosine of 3 theta plus j times sine of 3 theta. This is straight from De Moivre's theorem. Uh, that I can cover in a different video uh, showing how that works, but uh, we'll save that for another one. So we've got this now, right? And we know that three, our 3 theta is going to be equal to 0, right? Because it, the, it makes this z to the 3 it makes an angle of uh, zero degrees with the positive direction of the real axes. So we're going to replace this now with one time cos of zero plus j times sine of zero. So now I know that these real parts are going to be equal to each other and I've got these imaginary parts that are going to be equal to each other. So. What I'm really trying to do here I, is I want to try to find some sort of expression for theta. Um, and I needed to satisfy both of these things, where cos of 3 theta is equal to cosine of 0, and sine of 3 theta is equal to the sine, sine of 0. Right? Great. OK. So solving this, I've got cosine of 3 theta is equal to cos of 0 is going to be 1 and I've got sine of 3 theta is equal to sine of 0 which is 0. So now what I want to do is I just want to do a quick little graph to visualize visualize where these solutions are. So this here is cosine of 3 theta this will be sine of 3 theta. And then this is 3 theta. This is 3 theta. Great. 
and we've got something that looks kind of like this approximately definitely not the most accurate but it's gonna have some sort of pattern that looks like this right great okay and if you look at this where does my cos of 3 theta when is that going to be equal to 1 it's going to be equal to 1 right at these right at these peaks right and now let's look at this other example sine of 3 theta that's going to be equal to 0 that's going to be equal right there 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 and there and you'll notice something the distance between these two well, this is going to be a distance of 2 pi. So our solution for cosine of 3 theta, that's going to repeat every 2 pi. Every 2 pi. And that could be 2 pi times 1, times 2, times 3. So I know that 3 theta will be equal to 0 every 2 pi. And it's every multiple of 2 pi. So we can have k be any any sort of integer, any sort of positive integer here, or positive or negative, I guess, right? So that's every that's our uh, how often our answer will repeat for our cosine. But we need to take a look at uh, at sine, because you'll notice with sine that this one is going to repeat every pi radians. This distance is going to be pi, right? So you'll notice that for sine, the solution for the imaginary part of our equation is going to be 0 plus pi k, where k is any sort of integer. Right? So what we want to do here is we want to pick the, like, the pickier solution, like the one that's going to satisfy both equations. Because if we're, just, if we're, if we're coming up with some sort of solution for theta, then we don't want to choose the one that only satisfies the sine. We want to choose one that satisfies cosine because at least the cosine part and the sine part is always going to be happy if I use cosine's condition. If I use sine's condition, then only one of them is going to be satisfied half the time. So what I want to show you is that if we now have got, so we've got 3 theta is equal to 0 plus 2 pi k. And now I want to divide both sides and isolate for theta. So theta is going to be equal to 0 plus 2 pi k divided by 3. And this is the theta that one of the roots of our complex numbers makes. So I want to move to another, another little example to make this a little bit more obvious. So let's, let's move to the example that z to the power of 6 is equal to negative 64. Let's, let's use this one. So again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw this on the argon diagram. But imaginary, i got the real side. Oh, let me scroll down. Great. And I know that it's going to, it's going to travel in the negative direction of the real axis and zero units in the imaginary axis. And this is z to the 6. And I know that this makes an angle with the positive direction of the real axis of pi. Right? So let's write this out. Let's write this out. Using the Moivre's theorem, I know that the modulus of z to the 6 is going to be 64. Great. OK. So using the Moivre's theorem, I know r to the 6 is equal to, or r to the six um, cosine of cosine of six theta plus j sine of six theta is going to be equal to, and I've got sixty four cosine of, and then my, I said that six theta is going to be pi plus j sine of pi. So let's take a look, okay. We know that the imaginary part's gonna be equal and the real parts will be equal. So I've got something that looks like this and I've got something that looks like this. 
right? And I said earlier, we said earlier that this is going to be a distance of 2 pi k away, and the other one will be a distance of pi k. That's how that's how much our uh, the, our solutions are going to be, be repeating themselves. And we said last time that we're going to stick with the 2 pi k as our uh, as our solution that we want to go with, right? And k can be any integer. Great. So I know that the theta here is going to be pi plus 2 pi k over 6. So you'll kind of recognize here that the that single angle that we're talking about, the angle of that, that that root makes is going to be equal to, and then in general form, it's going to be equal to theta plus 2 pi k divided by the number of roots, right? It's kind of like we're doing opposite of De Moivre's theorem. So you'll also notice that for the modulus, we've got r to the 6. Let me scroll down again. We've got r to the 6 is equal to 64, right? And we know that when we're talking about nth roots, we want something that if it multiplies by, it's, if we're multiplying it by itself, we're going to be multiplying the moduluses, right? So we can just solve normally and take the sixth root of 64. In other words, in general terms, we want this modulus to be r to the 1 over n. So if we want something that if we're going to multiply for the single root, if we multiply that single root six times by itself, then we want that modulus to add up or to multiply to 64. And that'll be the sixth root of 64. So that's why in general terms, we can say that we can say that for the root of a number, it's going to be the modulus will be r to the 1 over n. And then we'll have cosine. And now we understand that the angle for one root will be theta plus 2 pi k over n plus j times sine. And this will be the same, of course. 2 pi k over n. So I hope that it makes a bit more sense now as to where this formula comes from. Um, thank you guys for watching. I did my best to explain it. Um, so I really hope that you guys got something out of it. And just uh, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll be uploading more uh, primarily linear, linear algebra videos throughout the term, uh, trying to explain some of the more challenging concepts and like how to actually understand this stuff. So thank you guys and see you in the next video.